Well, good morning, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the service so far. Um, being led by Ablaze, the teenage group here at um, New Life. Um, so today I want to talk about uh, a huge subject, actually, uh, the father. And um, if you take anything away from this talk, um, I want you to know this, that the father loves you in exactly the same way that he loves the Lord Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. Um, we're in this psalm season at the moment and uh, like I, I, I was basically I was trying to find a psalm that that talked about the father um, and uh, you know his relationship to his children and so forth and really there's then there aren't any psalms in entirety that do this there are some psalms that elude to this um, that God is a father a loving father in fact um, but there's no psalm that talks about God as father um, and reveals him in that sense. And really, it just made me ask the question, why? Um, and um, in unpacking the answer, um, it should encourage us really to um, really uh, do some digging of our own in and around the Bible and hopefully bring more of the Bible to, to, to light to us and help us in our walk and in our fellowship with with God um, as our Father. Uh, so let's join Ruth now um, in prayer as she prays for the message. Father, I just want to say um, thank you for being our Father. Thank you for being there for us. As Daniel is going to give your message to us, pray that your Holy Spirit will direct him. I pray that you will open our hearts to know you as our Father. I pray that you open our eyes and our heart to know you much more um, as our Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Ruth. Amazing prayer. So, uh, Psalm 22, uh, an amazing psalm, uh, really prophetic and also uh, telling of Jesus' his death and uh, his uh, resurrection, the crucifixion in particular. Um, in incredible detail as well. Um, but it also shows, again, a, a, a resurrected Jesus uh, where we can see um, him declaring um, the name of God to his brothers. Um, and it's in that, really, that I think the, 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 the reason for there not being any, um, any psalm dedicated to the Father or pretty much like... Uh, any reference to to God as a, a loving Father out and out uh, in in the Old Testament, really, and it's it's simply that because Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, God's only begotten Son, is 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 the only one that can really reveal Him uh, to us, can reveal God as Father to us. Um, so let's hear let's hear from the Psalm. For dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O lords, do not be far from me. O my strength, hasten to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. You have answered me. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. So Psalm 22, an amazing psalm. I really do encourage you to, to read it. Um, we probably will be touching on it in the Bible study later on in the week. Um, but it's an amazing psalm. It talks about um, Jesus' uh, crucifixion. Um, actually, Bob did a talk on this already. So uh, you can probably have a look at that as well to really get a, a really good grounding of this psalm. Um, but um, yeah, at its core, it talks about Jesus' crucifixion, but shortly after the crucifixion, it focuses um, on a resurrected Jesus declaring his, uh, the name of God to his brethren in, or brothers uh, in, the, in the assembly. Um, and that's the first thing that he, he uh, does after he's uh, resurrected. So to speak, and it's in that when you when you really like think about it and meditate on it and read into it, you you see the answer for why um, why there is no real psalm that is 
strictly about the father or in the old testament even that he's sort of um referred to as a uh, father out and out and like you know with big passages or chapters written about the, the you know god being a dad to his people um it's not really not really there um and it's yeah the, the answer is simply this that only the son only jesus christ uh his only begotten son um has known that that relationship really has experienced that relationship uh to its entirety um so it's only for him really he he's the only one that has the place to to reveal god as father he's the only one that can introduce him as father because he's the only one that knows him really strictly as father that loving union in the godhead father son holy spirit um and it's it's uh really profound because he's calling us brothers in the, in that in that verse 22 i'm talking about in particular um so ultimately we're we're now invited into that that loving union that the the godhead has uh john 14 verse 6 says this jesus answered i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me i love this scripture um it, uh, it's, it's got to be one of my favourites uh, and it seems to be uh, popping up a lot when I'm talking or sharing about, um, about my faith, about God in general. Um, I remember being in an Uber once, uh, going to a party and I got uh, into a conversation about faith uh, with, with the driver who happened to be a Christian himself. Um, so he asked me like, oh, you know, what's your what's your favorite scripture? And I, I didn't even know where it was at the time. I think I was, I was just like, um, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the father but by me. And I was like, yeah. And then he was like, that's a basic scripture. And I was like, what? <laughs> so I didn't know what to say after that. I was like, a, a bit, I got a bit blindsided by that comment. And then he like, I don't know, told me his scripture and stuff like this. I, I just wasn't aware that scriptures could be basic or advanced. But um, I think it, it, it's um, more important to, to, to know what Jesus is actually saying here. Uh, he's saying that I am the way in which through me, um, you can call God your dad as I do. Um, and that's so powerful. Um, it also shows that we're on the way, but like there is a destination and that destination is the father. That destination is the father. That, that's eternal life. That's the love of the father um, that he has for us. That's our destination. That's our, that's our walk. Um, and uh, again, uh, you've got to remember that um, for the Jewish people, this is like a really new thing. Um, and, and maybe even the Gentiles as well that were listening to the teachers of Jesus because he was introducing God as as dad, as daddy God. Um, prior to this, they knew him as Yahweh, they knew him as Elohim and all this, but they didn't know him as Abba. They didn't know him as daddy God. That was, that was something very new and uh, he was challenged a lot uh, on this alone kind of thing. Um, you know, and it also puts uh, the fact that um, we can call God dad puts a clear distinction between us and the, and the rest of the faiths of the world. Um, it's in, in knowing that that intimate kind of relationship uh, that we have with our, our heavenly father. It just gives us so much security, especially in uh, times that we're living in at the moment. Um, it's just so reassuring to know that we're not praying to a force or some high and lofty deity that might bear us some some kind of attention or something, or that we have to work up to, you know, uh, get the attention of, you know, this is our dad. He he is on the on the on the throne. Um, it is going to remind me of a, um, when I was also working in Selfridges uh, in my early twenties, and um, yeah, I used to work in the stockroom there for diesel and it it was a funny little community of people um because you you know you'd have people running past and this and that and the third and everybody's busy down there uh trying to get trying to get things done um we had a brazilian uh cleaner that used to work there also is a lovely lovely guy a really really nice guy 
um, you know, just quiet, just always cracks on, gets his work done. But if you talk to him, he'd talk back and, you know, he'd really help you out if you needed some help. And I used to see him sometimes get hot and flustered because his, his workload was like beyond his wage packet, let's just say. Um, and the guy, like, he looked really, really upset one day. And I wasn't having a, a, a particularly great day myself um, because I had a lot of work to do at the time as well. And I was like, oh, what's going on? And he was like, oh, you know, I've got this to do, I've got that to do, I've got to organise this, I've got to clean that. And I finish like in five minutes, but like the work's going to take me like three hours or something like this. So, um, you know, he, he ended up giving me this whole spiel. And then by the end of it, this this kind of, it was strange, this first stern look of confidence just came across his face. And he's as he was walking off and looking at me, he just said, God is on the top. And from there, I just, that just picked me right up. When I heard that, I was like, that's right. God is on the top, you know. Um, there's at the top and then there's on the top. That's different. And it, it, it's so reassuring in times like these to know that uh, that our dad, our daddy God is is on the top and we have access to him and he wants to be with us and in us, um, in, in our struggles and, and, and just in our day to day. Um, it's it's so rewarding and so comforting to to know this, um, and that's what I'm trying to share with you today. That that your daddy daddy God is on the top. Okay, um, so let's let's go to our next scripture. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. And again, knowing God as Father can only really be revealed, excuse me, by Jesus. Um, it also highlights the the exclusivity of this this union, this relationship um, of the Godhead, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, and it's it's really it's really by invite only. Um, however, God desires all men to come to the knowledge of the truth and be saved. You know, the, 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 the passage continues. Um, it says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you, I will give you rest. And that rest, what is it? It is knowing God as your dad. Um, the prayer in John 17 has some amazing points um, that Jesus prays just before he's about to get arrested. Uh, he prays for his disciples and he prays for his future believers as well. Uh, in verse 6 it says, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. He's saying, I've manifest your name. I've, I've, demonstrated, I de I've demonstrated your name with my life. And, and what is that name? It's, it's Daddy God, it's Father. It's Father. And we have to remember when uh, Jesus says, he who has seen me has seen, has seen the Father. You know, um, this is really, really profound because again, for the Jewish people, for the people that, that were, that were um, following Jesus at the, at the time, learning from him, this, this was completely new to them, a new, new idea that we could call God that. Wow, that's, that's incredible. Um, and uh, we have to also remember that titles in the Bible um, are synonymous with names. They're interchangeable. So, for example, where it says in the book of Isaiah, and he shall be called Emmanuel. That's a name. But well, Emmanuel means God with us. That's a title. Where it says, um, uh, and you shall call him Jesus, which is, you know, a, a, a English trans translation of, of uh, Yeshua, which means savior or he shall save um so yes again a title and the name synonymous with each other but later on in the um in in that same prayer um just before he's, he's jesus is about to get arrested um it's it's kind of he reaches like the pinnacle of of the prayer and it's one of the sweetest prayers that i i think i've come to know in the bible um as he uh, reveals uh, the Father to us. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. 
I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. And again, he says, I've declared your name. I've made it known. I've, 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 I've manifested, you know, um, and I will declare your name. I will carry on declaring your name. You know, when we're, when we're praising the Father, Jesus is right there with us. Um, you know, and, and again in Psalm 22, verse 22, uh, where he says, I will declare your name amongst my brothers. We've been invited in. Uh, but at the top of all of this, at the top of all of this is that love. That the love that the Father had for Jesus and Jesus for his Father, they now have for us who believe. When we're now children of God, it's incredible. The, 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 the creator of the universe, the most high God, I can call him Daddy God. I can call to him and he will hear me. It's, it's, it's mind blowing, but it's what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. And it's, it's so comforting. It, there's so much peace. There's so much joy there. Um, that, that this love that God has for me, um, <laughs> I mean, it, I didn't grow up with an earthly, earthly father, um, and I know some others of us in the congregation didn't. Some of us did, but to be honest, this 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 trumps this trumps both situations, you know. Um, just knowing God as as my dad, as Daddy God, um, is incredible. So to end, I would just like to uh, leave with this scripture. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God. It has not yet been revealed to us what we shall be, but we know when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is, and everyone who has his hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure.